It's a quarter to Tuesday, and over in Slut, old trout Letty Bell is celebrating her birthday. It's a tradition here in Britain to give unwanted gifts on birthdays. Letty is aghast at real frogs. They make her lumpy. Help her squash all of the vermin lickety-split, but don't smash her ornaments or stuffed froggies. Bring it on! So this minigame, it's like whack-a-mole, but instead of there being empty holes when the moles are gone, there's furniture for you to break. And if you break the furniture, you lose points. So, the idea is to keep your baton in a relative area you think the frogs will jump and then, you know, kill them. And I guess it's okay. It's not really engaging or anything. And it's more slow-paced than most of the other minigames, but it does have some really amazing music, and I mean that completely unironically. I'm going to assume the music in this game is originally composed because it just fits way too well. But this is some damn good music. So, I don't know what this character's deal is. I don't know if her whole thing is hating frogs, or if this is just a one-sketch thing, or if she even appeared in multiple sketches, but... I do think there's a genuinely funny line in this minigame where she exclaims, Ah, he bit me, whenever she kills one of the frogs. I think that's actually, that's actually pretty good. Made me smile a little. This minigame's kinda hard to lose, it's really easy to get the mandatory amount of points. I do kind of like the idea that she really despises real frogs, but loves stuffed frogs, frog vases, frog pillows frog plushes. I think that's, you know, a reasonable enough joke, but I was told all of the characters have the same gimmick throughout all of their sketches, so if her whole thing is that she hates frogs, then I guess that's kind of boring. Smooth as a baby lady in frog's clothing, I'd like to shake you by the hand and let you continue on this magnificent tour. But first, let's take a moment to visit Darkly Noon and see what teenage sensation Vicky Pollard is doing with her life. Unlike some countries, Britain has two genders. Ladies and men. Here, in the seaside town of Old Haven, Emily and his friend Florence think they are ladies. Write it down. Ladies. Emily can't resist footy, or, as it's also known, socky. Help her get as many shots into the goal as she can, so she can titter about it later over Sherry. She needs to score at least three on easy, four on medium, or five on hard. Who oh boy, uh, 2005 to 2007 was a wild time, huh? Either that or this is just a kind of hateful video game based on a hateful TV show. So this mini game is different in the PSP version. and the PS2 version, it's a, basically a full version of soccer. And this one, it's just a penalty kick mini game. I prefer this one. Uh, so Emily Howard, who we're playing as right now, the entire joke with Emily Howard, if you want to call it a joke, is that Emily Howard has extreme gender dysphoria, and a lot of people think it's funny that she insists she's a woman. That's the joke. The clip that comes with this game featuring Emily is especially kind of sad. Like, I don't know if it was meant to be funny or just discomforting and dark. She broke one of her legs, so she has to go get an x-ray. And the doctor says she has to put a sheet of lead over her private parts to prevent any of the radiation from, you know, doing whatever to her testicles. At first she denies she has testicles, and then she's, you know, forced to admit she does, which is uncomfortable and sad in itself. But then she desperately tries to get out of putting the sheet of lead over her testicles. Even going so far far as to, like, ask if she can take some time to embroider the lead sheet, like, liven it up with some girly colors because she's so obsessed with seeming feminine and being seen as a woman 
that she's insecure to the point she won't even get an x-ray of her leg if she can't make it seem feminine. And that's supposed to be funny. You've scored a lady's hat trick! Bang in! This is cause for celebration. You have won a ticket to continue this, our whistle-stop tour of Britain. But before we leave, let's stay with Emily for just a few minutes more. She really is a hoot. One thing this country does better than all the others is fates. We can proudly boast that Britain is the fate capital of the world. Over in Pox, these ladies are taking part in the local fate. Like many women Maggie's age in Britain, she does like a good projectile vomit. Help Maggie digest as much delightful food as possible by lining up similar items that are similar. Once she retches, score points by vomiting over everyone in sight. Oh, give me strength. You know, I kind of wonder if, like, whoever the announcer for this game was, whatever famous British man did the announcements for this game, I wonder if he regrets the thing he said about non-binary people, or if he regrets the jokes about transgendered individuals, or... Like, because did anyone even play this to hear him say that? And did it really change their opinion of him? Like, work is work, alright? You get paid to do voiceovers, you do voiceovers. I'm not in a position to talk. I love talking so much that if anyone offered to let me do a voiceover where I said something that stupid, I would probably still do it. And I mean, I guess this is a stupid show. I just really can't tell whether it's... Whether it's just hateful? Or if it's trying to be artistically dark or something, because that... That x-ray skit featuring Emily is really, really discomforting to watch. Like, I can't watch it and not feel horrible for Emily. Like, it almost makes me want to cry. I don't think that's the appropriate response. I think maybe that it's just actually kind of hateful. But maybe it's not, and the idea is to make me uncomfortable. And if so, I guess it did a good job. Like, I've recently played through Postal 3, and I love Postal 3, but Postal 3 seems less hateful than Little Britain based on what I've seen. Granted, again, this could be cherry-picking. Maybe the skits featured in this video game specifically are just really awful. But Little Britain seems way more hateful than anything that happens in Postal 3, and the characters seem way more gross. I find it personally difficult difficult to uh, get upset about this game and show, though, because even though it does seem hateful, I'm pretty sure it's just a product of people having a really childish sense of humor and nothing more than that. You have won the much-desired and often fought-over bus seat to Clandui Brefi, where, I must warn you, there are rumors of gayism. But just before we go, let's pop back to Herbie to see Lou and Andy again. Have you ever done it gay-wise? I have. It's a hoot. <laughs> Here we are in the charming Welsh village of Clandui Brefi, home of bottom enthusiast and out gay man Daffid Thomas. It would be a gay disaster if copies of gay magazines fell into the wrong hands. Manhandle Daffid Thomas and collect as many copies of the magazine as you can while running down the villagers who are getting in the way. Push it real good. Three, two, one, go. So this minigame is another lane-based minigame, but it's just kind of worse than the first one. The idea is that we run over other gay people and or punch them to get points, and we need a certain amount of points before we finish both laps. So the idea behind this character we're playing as, I already forgot his fucking name, but the idea behind this character we're playing as seems to be that he builds his entire identity around being gay, and I know there are people who are actually like that, so it's not a terrible idea to explore such a character, because that seems unhealthy to build your entire personality around your sexuality. Like, I am gay, and it always seems weird to me 
the way people overemphasize their sexuality as part of their their personality in many circumstances, both straight and homosexual people and anything in between. Putting so much emphasis on sexuality just comes across as strange to me. Uh, and it seems that this character we're playing as... I can't believe I can't remember his name. Uh, Daffy Thomas, I think. Daffy is also homophobic to a degree, it seems like, and is in disbelief that other gay people actually exist. Like, he thinks being gay is what makes him special, and he's not a fan that there are other gay people, is what I'm getting out of his character. And I could be wrong, because this game only gave me a couple of clips to work with, but that's what I'm getting out of his character, is that he's a little bit homophobic, he makes homosexuality an important part of who he is, even though he's forcing it. That's what I'm getting, and that's not like a terrible idea for a comedy character, or a terrible idea for a character type to deconstruct. But I'm getting the idea that none of these people have character development or anything like that. Like, maybe their characters don't really go anywhere. When I was watching that those Emily Howard skits the game provided, I was thinking how interesting it would be if the show made commentary on how hateful the world was towards transgendered individuals, and then I realized that's not what the show was going to do, and it was going to keep making... Probably going to keep making jokes about how Emily says she's a girl and other people think that's funny. Can you tell I'm struggling to form some kind of coherent opinion on Little Britain? And yeah, I could watch more of the show and maybe that would help, but I really don't think it would. Because, like, even if it just turned out the show was super mean or whatever in general, I'm not sure that would change much. Because it really just seems like the people that made the show or this game have a really childish sense of humor. I'm pretty sure one of the show's creators is gay himself. It's just so hard for me to feel anything consistent about what's going on. But you know, maybe if I ever do watch Little Britain, which seems unlikely, I'll come back and do a second Let's Play of Little Britain and analyze the show more thoroughly. Maybe I'll do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. If they make a second video game, though, for some reason, I'll play that. Never mind that the show's been dead for a decade now. If they make another game, for some reason, I'll play it. Maybe the next game should be entirely Endless Runner focused. So this minigame is kind of bad. Subpar to bad. And it's a rehash of an earlier, better minigame. But this is still, what you're seeing right here is still very far above the normal standard of quality for Blast, the publishers of this game. Blast is arguably the worst publisher of video games in the PS2 era. And this is just so much higher quality than their normal stuff, it's weird. Maybe it's because Little Britain was a really, really popular license at the time this game came out. So maybe they felt obligated to give their developer more time or budget or something? And the developer only seemed to make this one game, even though the game was published by Blast. So, it's an odd situation. I think you'll find I am the only gay in this village. You are a most gracious and most worthy winner, and now it's my most well-heavy news that this scintillating tour has come unfull circle. Here, we must leave this country of giant midgets and bid farewell for now to all the people that make it kick butt. But first, let us stay with Daffy Thomas a little longer. He really is a gay. Good boo! Moonwha- And- This is the uh, communal garden, and we all look after it together. So this is the optional 8th minigame that appears exclusively in the PSP version. We have to destroy 30 plants in the garden. We can pick up the plants and throw them to stun these people that want to take Anne away because she's crazy. And we get more points if we stun them. So we're just going to do that until we get the required amount of points. 
this minigame's biggest defense is that none of it flows well. The other minigames can be construed to be functioning games of a sort, but this one, there's like no challenge involved, even on hard difficulty. So I looked up a little more about Anne, because Anne seemed to be the only character that was deliberately mentally ill, even though many of the characters could be argued to have some kind of mental illness. And she, uh, Anne just speaks in gibberish and does stereotypical insane people things like chew on books or lick all over someone's face or defecate in public. As a mentally ill person, I can't deny that there are mental illnesses that would make you more likely to do such things. Like, it would be lying to say that that's not a thing that could happen if you had some combination of mental illnesses. And that neuro neurotypical people are less likely to do such things. But it's really difficult to understand why that observation is humorous. Again, it just seems uncomfortable. Like, watching skits with Anne just seems very uncomfortable. And I'm not sure whether that discomfort is the intended joke, or whether the joke is just that mentally ill people act funny. I'm not sure. Like, I'm sure there's someone out there that would argue that Little Britain is genius, or celebrate Little Britain for its uh, understanding of stereotypes and deconstructing them or something like that. I really have no idea what the fuck to think or feel about this show. Again, part of that is because I haven't seen much of it, but... It's like 10 to 20 minutes of clips in this game, so... It's like a whole episode, right? So, Little Brit in the video game goes out with a fart. This is probably the worst of the minigames from a design and challenge standpoint. It's just absolute nonsense. So, uh, you know, that's Little Britain the video game. It's functional. It's much better than other Blast games. You could do worse single-player minigame collections. I wish I, that weren't true, but it is. There are many worse single-player minigame collections than this. Much worse. It's up to you whether it deserves to be the lowest-rated PSP game. I still think maybe Hero of Sparta is a worse PSP game, and there are many other PSP minis that are probably worse designed than this. There may be other mini game collections on PSP that are worse designed, but that's it. Game's over now. It's done. It's all done.